Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is a game of many factions and guilds. Magic colleges that teach you spells you'll never use and you'll eventually have to save. Gangs of thieves on the precipice of disaster that you also must save. Hmm. Might be a trend here. Regardless of Skyrim's many factions, the Dark Brotherhood is easily one of my favorites. They don't pretend to be the good guys or act like they're on some moral high ground. And they operate quite mysteriously. And such mysteriousness breeds curiosity. So today we'll be taking a look at five things you may not have known about the Dark Brotherhood in The Elder Scrolls V. Starting off, Lurbuck is one of the first targets the Dark Brotherhood orders you to kill. He's an orc staying at the Moorside Inn in Morthal, and is almost universally regarded as the worst bard in Tamriel. In fact, according to Nazir, there were so many people that performed the Black Sacrament to have this orc killed for his terrible music, that the Dark Brotherhood ultimately had to award the contract by a lottery. Surprisingly, when you speak to him, Lurbuck claims to have graduated from the prestigious Bard's College in Solitude, and seems to believe that the people will eventually warm up to his glorious songs. However, what you might not have known is that Lurbuck also seems to descend from a very powerful orcish father. Should you decide to kill Lurbuck stealthfully, before the Dark Brotherhood orders you to do so, just sort of on your own intuition without the quest attached, there's a small chance that Chief Burguk of the Dushnik Yal Orcish Stronghold will send the Dragonborn a thank you letter, praising you for killing the Bard. That's a bit weird. A closer inspection of Skyrim's files in the creation kit reveals that Chief Burguk is actually registered as Lurbuck's own father. This relationship isn't elaborated upon through normal dialogue or anything of the sort, but it seems fairly safe to say that Burguk, being the powerful orcish warlord that he is, must have been so embarrassed by the path in life his son decided to pursue that he's glad to see him gone. Perhaps Burguk is even one of the people who reached out to the Brotherhood to solve his little problem in the first place. Next on our list, the book The Night Mother's Truth is written by an author named Gaston Bellafort. It describes the origins of the Night Mother, a powerful godlike matriarch to the Dark Brotherhood. Furthermore, it also narrates the guild's history and founding. Well, you can actually discover that this book's author suffered a pretty horrifying fate. If you head inside the Dark Brotherhood's Falkreath Sanctuary and visit the small spider pit for the guild's pet frostbite spider, Liz, you can find a small pile of bones and human remains that belong to, guess who? Gaston Bellafort. In the skeleton's inventory is a small note, which reads the following. Quote, My scribing tools are lost, and I've got no time for a lengthy entry. Anyway, it's taken weeks, but I've finally found it. The Sanctuary of the Dark Brotherhood. One of them, anyway. In Skyrim, under a forest road. I've been watching them, the assassins, their comings and goings. The fools have no idea they're being observed. My next goal is to make it past the sinister black door into the sanctuary itself. I don't have time to even think about the dangers. The truth must be known. End quote. You can probably guess what happened. This unlucky man was so consumed in his quest to learn more about the Brotherhood that he tracked down their sanctuary, perhaps in hopes of writing another book, and was even intending to break inside. Obviously, that didn't work out the way he was hoping and was captured. At least he had some success in his profession, unlike Lurbuck over there. For third spot, after beginning the quest, The Cure for Madness, the Dragonborn is given the ability to summon a spectral assassin, the spirit of a former Brotherhood member through a spell, and he'll stick with the player until you decide to summon something else. Well, that spirit is actually that of Lucien Lachance, a member of the Dark Brotherhood all the way back in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, whom you can meet and befriend. He was actually a pretty nice dude, until he was framed and murdered for a crime he never committed. Anyway, he randomly may say the following line of dialogue. Tale of Matthew Bellamont and the great treachery of Jaden Hall. Kill a boy's mother and vengeance festers in the sun. This is a clever reference to the Elder Scrolls IV's main antagonist to the Dark Brotherhood questline. You see that man, Matteo Bellamont, was a member of the guild in the Elder Scrolls IV, who was secretly a traitor, planning to destroy them from the inside. The reason being is that when Matteo was a boy, his mother was killed by Brotherhood assassins, so he dedicated his life to achieving vengeance. He's not exactly that bad of a guy when you see it through his eyes, however, you're on the Brotherhood side. Ultimately, Matteo was the one responsible for Lucian's death, and a whole lot of other bloodshed in Oblivion, and Lucian evidently remembers. Furthermore, the Spectral Assassin also cracks other, albeit more subtle, references to the previous Elder Scrolls game in his dialogue. 
joking about poison apples and the death of Emperor Uriel Septim. Even after hundreds of years in an eternal black void, Lucian is not a very forgetful man. Coming in at number four, while we're still on the topic of Oblivion references, Cicero the Sadistic Gesture is probably among the creepiest and most interesting characters in the game. Well, a peek into his journals suggests that he also took up the persona of a very familiar friend. In Cicero's first journal entry, written long before he went insane and became an overglorified clown, he writes about taking up a contract that may seem a bit too recognizable for some Elder Scrolls IV players. He claims that he was given a contract to assassinate a champion of the arena in Cyrodiil. To accomplish this, Cicero states he took up the identity of a starstruck fan and got into the champion's good graces, only to slit his throat once the two were alone in the woods. Of course, as anyone who played Oblivion will recall, the player character was often regarded as the champion of the arena in Cyrodiil, and one particularly annoying follower you could acquire was a Bosmer simply known as the Adoring Fan. The Adoring Fan admired you for your glorious feats in the arena, and the character's creepiness and general poor proficiency in combat made him a bit of a meme amongst the Elder Scrolls IV community. So Bethesda apparently decided to include a bit of a nod to this colorful character in Cicero's backstory. But never fear, Cicero wasn't the same adoring fan you encountered in Oblivion. That was hundreds of years ago, so that's not possible. Hopefully. And before we get to number five, I've got one honorable mention that I'd like to share. The player can sometimes find Babette, a member of the Brotherhood who is also a vampiric child, as part of a random encounter. She has a very small chance of spawning on the sides of roads at nighttime, and when she's approached, she'll tell you that she's, quote, waiting for her next snack. It's pretty terrifying. Anyway, last on our list, the fall of the Dark Brotherhood's Falkreath Sanctuary is among the most depressing moments in the entirety of Skyrim. Watching so many characters you've grown to love meet their doom is never an easy thing to do. Well, what you might not have known is that this event may have been foreseen by a fellow assassin. You see, when inside the sanctuary, long before this attack ever takes place, the Dragonborn has a small chance to overhear a conversation between Gabriella, a dark elf assassin, and Festus Crex, the guild's cranky uncle. Gabriella will say the following. Exploit certainly has the sanctuary talking. Ah, oh, you must mean my little adventure on the ship. It was a suicide mission, Astrid said as much. Yet here you stand, hale and hearty. When one can divine the future, success may not be assured. But it can at least be anticipated. It helps that I've already foretold my own death. She had an idea that something was coming, but wasn't entirely sure what. If only she paid a little bit more attention to her gut. Hey, that rhymed. I swear that part wasn't scripted. Anyway, on that rhythmic note, we are going to wrap up. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, like ratings are, as always, very much appreciated. And what trivial facts about the Dark Brotherhood, or really any other guild in Skyrim, do you know that I haven't covered before? Leave a comment down below. Again, thanks for stopping by, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.